Okay, this video is for one of my horse listeners who also has a challenging dog. So she's asked me for how do I apply my principles and what do I do with my dog? So um, this is Kumba and he is a Kootenai Mountain Dog, which is a blend of livestock guardian. So we've got very strong um, guardian dog energy on Kumba. This is Tia. She is half Aussie Shepherd and she is half Talton Bear Dog. And her father is the last Talton Bear Dog in existence. They're now extinct. She was bred um, way up north in Bella Coola, where the First Nations people um, worked in partnership with these dogs to hunt bear. So her training is to be a very independent thinker, to go out ahead of the hunters, find the bear, then keep the bear isolated in that spot by letting out this bear call. And um, we heard it once when she was a puppy, she and her brother were a puppy, and it's a super high pitched, um, almost like a, a it's like a, it's unlike any other dog sound you've ever heard. So um, that's her genetics. And his genetics are, and I saw this right from when he was a tiny puppy, was um, if you're in the woods, he follows you right next to you. His genetics is not to leave your side, to guard you. So the two of them are actually, they both came to me spiritually. I didn't go out looking and seeking and choosing them. Um, this is a story for both of them, but they actually work in tandem um, super well because he doesn't leave you and she secures the perimeter. So it's really important when we're looking at um, our dogs or difficulties that we're having with our dogs to understand what's in their genetics what has been bred into um, the very tissues and the neural maps that are are passed down in the dog's brain so i'm going to give you i they know we're going out i'm going to take them out and i'm going to film just pieces of that for you to see in real life how all of this stuff plays out so here we go and here are their collars the second I go over to them and pick them up, they know what's happening. So right away, we have a difference in personality. Kumba's four and he gets very excited. He's already been running around um, with shoes in his mouth. That's his way of self-soothing so he doesn't jump on anyone. And he actually figured that out himself because he's like, there's my knees, I'm five foot seven. He's a huge dog. So as a puppy, we said to him, you cannot, here's our cat. So see how she navigates the dogs, even though they're excited, she knows and she's asking to go outside. And you see how they don't move because they know this is her gig and she's gone. Um, and that took a couple years for them to work out where she wouldn't be scared of them. And Kumba's actually more scared of her than she is of him. So it was a very interesting dynamic, but um, Kumba gets very excited. So he puts a shoe in his mouth to self-soothe and that way he doesn't jump up on anyone and doesn't hurt anyone. So that's brilliant. He came up with that idea himself because I just said to him, Kumba, you can't ever, ever jump because Tia jumps. The kids had taught her to jump up and like hold her paws and dance. And I said to him, you cannot do that because you'll kill a child. Like a four-year-old, you'll, you'll hit them. Their brain will smash open. You can't do it. So he came up with that idea on his own. Okay, so we have callers. So here's what happens. If I go, like he's a bit calm and they're aware that I'm filming, normally Kumbi would be running around right now and probably getting a shoe to self-soothe. So I don't try to work against his essential nature, I work with it. So what I do is I put the collar on Tia first. I don't even try to collar Kumba. You ready for yours? Yeah? Yeah, and so this is him getting a little bit excited. <laughs> a little bit excited. Now, if I go and I try to this is really hard to film and do. If I go and I try to put this on him, he might then just keep wheeling and wheeling around. So what I do is normally I let him get his shoe and I wait till he does that. Right now I'll go because he's down and he said, I'm ready now to have my collar put on. Good boy. Yes, you're a good boy. There. And that made it easy. So what could be, if you see other people try to call her Kumba, he's running all around the house and it's this epic struggle and they get really frustrated and really impatient because they're not looking to work with his nature and his needs. And, and they're instead trying to say, this is the way it should be done. 
and you must do it this way. So what I would do if I have to leave quickly is I would ask him to sit. And with my energy, I would root my energy into the ground and I would become absolutely still while asking him to sit. I can't be in a state of impatience and let's go and we've got to get one real because we're going to be late. I can't be that and ask him to not mirror that back to me. So again, whether you're working with dogs and horses, the energy always starts with you. You decide what energy is in the room. You decide what energy is being responded to. And until you can hold your energy strong enough to be the dominant energy, you're going to struggle a bit. But that's what the teaching is about. That's what animals are here to teach us, to say you must move into mastery of your own energy and your own thoughts and your own body. And then I can behave reasonably because I'm a reasonable creature. Okay, you guys ready to go? Ready to go? Yeah, yeah, time to go. So he's immediately, right, she's still like, mm hmm because she's like, you don't have your coat on, you don't have your car keys. <laughs> she's like, we ain't going nowhere yet, right? But this guy's more excitable, he's ready to go. So let me get my stuff and then we'll head her to the truck. Okay, so now I've got my keys and my coat and my purse. She's actually knows now that we're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do before I open the door, cause my husband doesn't do this. And then he's like, they just take off and they run across the road and they go to the neighbors. And I said, did you ask them to stay with you? I'm gonna ask, yeah, I'm gonna ask them right now when I open the door, I want them to stay with me, okay? Let's stay together, guys. And my idea of stay with me, hi, Marbles. My idea of stay with me is not stay right by my ankles, but stay in the yard and don't run onto the road and across to the neighbors. Come on, bubs, let's go straight to the truck. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna ask him to wait. Just to wait, Gumbi, wait. Good boy. So again, I haven't trained them to voice commands, but I want to open this window a little bit. Actually, I don't. It's raining. Okay, never mind. Okay, Bubba's. Go be up. There you go. There you go. So again, this is this is not. I don't train my dogs the same way I don't train my horses. But people say your dogs are so well trained and. I don't really, I guess it looks, cause I said up and they jumped up, but really this is more a series of signals or a language that we've co-evolved that works for both of us. Um, I bet you I could do it without saying the word up. I could just flash them a picture or with my energy, have my energy gesture towards the door. I'm sure it would work the same. Um, maybe I'll test that after we're done our walk. I won't say any words. I'll just use my energy and you'll see how, you know, dogs, all animals are super, super intelligent. They know what we're doing and they know what needs to be done. So let's head her. Okay, so we just arrived at the park. Everybody's ready to go, yeah? Now, if I want to, I can ask them to stay and give me a few moments. So let's try that. I want you guys to stay. Okay, stay. Ah, 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 ah. No, no, thank you. You're a good girl. Okay, I'm glad he did that. No, no. Kumbi, Kumba, Kumba, come here. No, up, up, go back, go back, up, Kumba, Kumba. Kumba. So he knows there's, thank you. Thank you so much for helping me teach. He knows that that wasn't for real and I didn't have a real reason. So, but this is a good teaching moment. Kumbi, Kumbi, give me bub bub. So I had to change from sternness to open heart. He go up, up, good boy. Good boy, thank you. Okay, now stay. Stay. Oh, okay, come on. Good girl. Good boy. There we go. Thank you, Kumba. That was great. 
So again, we have a language of communication, um, but it's not, you know, there's no coercion. You don't see me using treats. Um, the reward they get is my happiness that we were able to work together as a team. Now, so here we are. Um, I like to come, I lock my truck. I like to come to places that are off leash. because a dog's natural behaviors cannot be satisfied if they are on leash. Um, and so now that we're here, I'm asking them, which way do you want to go? So the core of my relationship with my dogs is not one where I'm the boss and the leader and I control them. It's the same relationship I have with my kids. I see my job as to be the one who advocates and supports them to be the highest, most authentic expression of their true self. I'm gonna pause and let that sink in. Are we going this way? So I'm here to support them to be the highest, truest, most authentic expression of their true self. That's my primary goal in my relationship with my dogs and my children. Oh dear. Sorry, ducks were here. Everybody were here. Thank you, Kumbi, for not rushing them too fast. Um, there's always things that I forget. I should, I actually have never been to this park, so I didn't know that there was water or I usually try to warn me. Okay, so everybody in the park, all creatures. I have dogs here. I have one who is a hunter. So please do what you need to do to stay out of our way. Um, so yeah, I don't have an agenda on this walk. This is their walk. This is their exercise and I'm here to follow them. And I will only say no or make a suggestion when they are going to violate a human rule that's going to get us in trouble. So they've come down here to the waterfront and they're both eating this crabgrass. And I've noticed that the crabgrass is the only variety of grass that they eat. And they do it, I believe, as a detox because it's a cleanser. It can make them vomit. Um, so if they have anything they need to cleanse out of their system, if they eat enough of this, they will barf. Um, but I think it's an intestinal cleanser. So it's good they do it as kind of a maintenance thing. So again, I have no agenda that they need to walk or exercise. Like the mental stimulation they're getting right now, all of their senses, um is as valuable as walking. So again, I just leave it to them. So one thing, one thing that Tia taught me uh, very early on by absolutely refusing to come when I called <laughs> was that my energy when I called her had to be in the right place. So if I want to call her using anger or sternness or disappointment or dominance or control. She's sticking two fingers up at me and saying, ah, see ya. So if I wanna call Tia, <laughs> I gotta open my heart wide and I gotta call her to me with love and joy of, and I have to send out to her, I love and appreciate you so much. And when she feels that energy, coming from my heart, from my chest, she bounds straight towards me. And I actually had the very same lesson from Juno, uh, one of my horses. I was experimenting to see how could I get him to come to me um, away from the herd. And the same thing worked. It wasn't about um, promises or treats or it was that can I get into that place where my heart is wide open and I'm calling to him only with love and joy at our connection. And then he just left his mama, left his herd and walked straight over to me. 
So again, if we're only focused on training and dominating our animals, we miss these incredibly powerful growth experiences for ourselves. So when your dog is like, let's say it's a high stress situation and someone said, you got to put your dog on a leash and you need to get your dog over to you right away. You know, if you have disapproval from another human, that creates a lot of stress in humans. You try to do that with Tia, get here, Tia, come. She is not coming. That nothing's going to happen. So you have to, even in the middle of that stressful situation with that human, or maybe there's a park authority figure who's like, you don't get your dog on leash. I'm going to give you a ticket. You have to still be able to drop into the place of love and openness and joy at your incredible connection with this animal and call them from that place. And then they come straight over. So again, in our relationship with our dogs, if we can look at it not as a vehicle for training, but as a vehicle for co-creation, co-learning, and growth, that you, your dog is there to help you grow and evolve in ways that you can't without that animal's help. That changes everything. Oh, donkey. Hello. Hello, Mr. Man. So as I'm walking, you don't see me making any claim to the dogs to stay nearby me because I don't need to. And Tia, by this point, if there was a big forest, she'd be gone. And this would really frustrate my cousin because she'd be like, I don't like taking tea out. She doesn't listen. She doesn't come when I call. So this is another thing. Kumba will come when you call, but that's his personality and that's his breeding, his genetics. So when we're looking at um, what we want to have in our relationship with our dog, we have to be realistic about their personality, their genetics, um, what's hardwired into them. Tia, as I explained, is hardwired to be an independent thinker. Her job is to secure the perimeter, to go out in front of me, which you see she's doing. This is not a dog who's ever going to want to heal and walk at my feet. She's like, are you crazy? That is so unsafe. Let me go out ahead. Let me be free. If this was a wider path, she would actually be working a perimeter not just going in a straight line in front of me. So, and I might add, she did hold a cougar off my daughter and I in in a wilderness area once. So she's not fluff and like she actually knows what she's doing and I have tremendous trust in her. So she'll disappear. She can disappear for five, maybe close to 10 minutes at a time. Make no mistake, she knows exactly where I am she knows exactly what's going on. It's me who doesn't know where she is. So then I devised a system with her, especially if we were out somewhere like here. I don't know where this goes. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know who comes in this park. So if I were to, call, let me hear, I'm gonna do the open heart con. Tia, Tia, come back. Come on, Bubba. come on, come on, Bubba. They're like, why are you calling us? <laughs> Cause I want to show people. <laughs> They're like, come on, show them Tia, show them darling. So opening my heart, opening it wider, come on, Baba, come on, darling, come here. <laughs> come on, Baba, come on. They're like, you're crazy. I don't know why you're doing this. It makes no sense, but they love me. Yeah, they love me. So I'm squatted down, and I'm so my chest is with their chest. Thank you. Thank you, Big Bear. Thank you, honey. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thanks for showing everybody. So see, and that also shows you that our relationship is very logical. Because I so rarely say no, I try to never say no. Same way I am with my kids. I try to always facilitate a yes for whatever their desires are. So when I ask them something like that, it's completely illogical. They're like, what are you doing? Like, you're kind of being nuts right now. Like, what are you doing? And then, you know, 
it was my persistence that, you know, can you guys do this for me? Cause I just want to show up for the camera. I want to teach people. And then they were like, sure, fine. But, and this is what real relationship and real intimacy looks like. It's not fake. It's not training. It's, it's just this endless back and forth of, of realness. Okay. So I'll turn it off and then we'll see if they want to bring any other um, things they want to demonstrate to you guys today. I'll turn the camera back on. I don't know if you guys can hear this. Can you hear those power lines? Oh my God, that's awful. These poor horses, they can never get away from it. So, okay. You guys want to go back? Cause I don't like the power lines. Yeah, can we go back? Thanks. Oh, that's horrible. I can actually feel when I'm around like a lot of electricity or electromagnetic radiation, I get this like pressure in the back left of my head and it just started up there. So again, that's a great demonstration of what real relationship looks like. Like that was for real. I was like, they could see that, ah, oh, you guys, I hate this. Can we go back? Absolutely. And we're heading back, no problem. So here's another breed related thing because Kumba's livestock guardian, if we get close to, um, not usually people, but dogs, he can go guard dog on me because he, he considers it his job to protect me. Now, that can quickly lead to aggression. Kumbi, come love, come. So I just saw some people go across the bridge with a dog. Yeah, there's their dogs. So Kumbars, I've got the leash here. Kumbi, can you come? Can you come? Good boy. So see, he knows I showed him the leash. There's no trickery involved. This is for his protection. Um, so that now, now when he's leashed, so I want this leash to be basically lying on his back like that. That's my ideal. Sometimes he does it. Sometimes he doesn't. There we go. I usually hold it with two fingers because I don't want any pressure on this because I've, I'm like, that's not good for you or me. So by leashing him, I've given him permission to not guard me. I have taken control. I am the boss. So now any anxiety he has and, you know, his breeding kicking in that he must guard me from these dogs up ahead is vanished because I'm in charge. And that's, again, that's a place of agreement in our relationship. You saw how he came and he saw that I had the leash and he's quite happily let me leash him because he also feels the benefit of this arrangement where I take the responsibility off his plate and I put it on mine. So again, another facet of relationship and, um, you know, just understanding your dog's personalities, their needs, their drives. Now they've gone that way, but for me, um, because I'm now, I'm in charge of our safety. So I'm going to feel, Tia, can we go this way? Can we go this way away from those other dogs? Can we go this way, honey? Good girl. Now I feel I can let him off because we're going a different way. Yeah. Who, baby? My dogs, my dogs know the horse language too. Okay, go ahead. Good boy. Uh, is that something dead? Is that something dead? Okay, good. Just don't roll in something decaying and dead. Because I would not be okay with that. So I'm still in the guardian role here. I'm still keeping an ear and an eye out for that other party. 
I am not going to put that responsibility onto him when I know that his breeding and genetics make it highly stacked that he will go into defense mode. And when one dog goes into defense, the other dog goes into aggression. That's how dogs roll. And I know that. So I won't set him up for a terrible experience in that way. So I will hold guardian until my body and my senses say that it's okay. To, so now they're wanting to go at that path, but I'm feeling that's gonna, guys, Tia, that's gonna join up with them. Can we go this one? Can we go this one instead? Yeah? Thanks, babe. Co so you see how the relationship thing works? When I said those words to her, I was simultaneously projecting a picture of those other people. So she's really clear that I'm not seeking to control them because I'm the human and I like to be the boss. She understands that my reasons are motivated by the highest good of all. And we don't want Kumba to have a negative experience because of course that'll mean we all have a negative experience. And so this is my idea of a solution to avoid that. And she's like, okay. Now she may know that we're gonna wind up where those people are anyway. And if that's the case, then I'm asking her or someone to alert me so I can get Kumba back on the leash. Uh, and then I'm relaxing and we're just playing it by ear. Guess what we have? Chickens. Yeah. I would love to get chickens, but this is my girl that I'd have to teach not to hunt them. So this is kind of a cool, kind of a cool experience here. Yeah. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. What do you think, Tia? What do you think of the chicken? Ooh. What is going on? <laughs> Someone is very upset. Oh, there's geese in there. What do you think? <laughs> Tia, good girl. I think the geese were like, it's time for you to leave. <laughs> wow, a lot of chickens in here. Very well protected. That's good. Okay, so, uh, no, Tia, no, Tia, come, come on, Daddy, come on. So I'm like, let's go. Come on. Come on. Did you just step on something sharp? Yeah, maybe he's put stuff there to deter dogs like you. Come on. That was my intuition. My intuition was like, let's move away from this property. Come on, baby girl. Good job. Good job. Good job, Tia. Um, Tia has killed chickens before and then we've had some good training sessions where she's really managed to hold it so uh, my gut is that I can teach her that chickens are part of our family and not to hunt them um, I think I can so we'll see when the time is right for that but again, I hope you guys are seeing that, you know, everything here is by feel. Oh, Kumbi, come. Come, darling. There's another person coming. Kumber, come. Come. Good boy. Let's put you back on the leash. Yeah. Oh, oh. Good 
good lad. Okay, let's take responsibility off you. Okay. Come on. Yeah, boy, I think they've taken a moment to leash their dog too. Okay, so they had a dog that didn't know boundaries at all and another dog that was really yappy. And they picked those two up and I said, put them down. I said, Tia's fine. So they let the dogs go, but I kept him on the leash. And you know, we just, we had an exchange because all dog owners understand that dogs have different personalities and they react differently in different situations. So I just kept hold of Kumba. And even though the dog with no boundaries swarmed us, he was fine because I was in charge and he didn't need to be. And then as the second they passed us, I let him off because I know that he feels his job is done. So now there's no danger to either of us. So I've never been to this park before, but it's a little too small. Like for me, I don't like the amount of boundary setting that I have to hold in this environment. This environment's not working for me. So um, I'm gonna ask the dogs and they might wanna go explore in there for a bit, but I'll see if they're ready to go. What do you guys feel? You want to walk a bit more or do you want to go in the truck? Hmm? So I'm going to unlock the truck. What do you think? You ready to go home? Or do you want to walk in here for a bit? Yeah, should we walk in there for a bit? Over in here? Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See how slow they're walking? Kumi's looking at me. They're like, it's really up to you. So I'm like, well, no one's down here. So let's go down here for a little bit. Because again, like if I really needed to get home and I totally absolutely had enough, then we would get in the truck. But again, I'm here to advocate for their freedom and for their experience. And this is their, this is their outing for today. So if I can make it longer for them, I want to. Um, and that builds relationship and that builds trust because they, they gain a lot of trust in me that I'm not just, you know, self-seeking and self-serving, that I really truly am on their side and I really truly do want what's best for them. Do you find a trail, Tia? Tia is the best trail finder ever. Yep, she has, Kumbi. She's found a trail, love. Yeah, you going to come with us now? <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful spot. This spot I like. Oh, crows are upset about something. Can't see them. It's a matter of crows. Ducks, we're in, we're above the creek here. Kumba loves the water. Those are some upset crows. I don't know. Are you guys upset about us being in this forest or what? They are not happy. Well, so I'm talking to the crows now and I'm saying, if you give me more information about why you don't want us here, we can leave. But I'm still not convinced you're making that ruckus towards us. So I'm going to wait more. So I'm saying to the crows, if you come closer to me, then I'll know that you're upset about us being in this space and then we will move on.
Good boy. Good job, Cody. Oh, there they are. Okay. Okay. Come on, guys. Let's go this way. Tia. The crows are asking us to leave, Tia Bird. So see how she's not listening to me right away? She's actually looking up at the crows. There she comes. So I think part of, um, let's go this way, Bubbies. Part of being um, trustworthy in relationship, when you understand the personality of your dog, like with Tia, if I was like calling her and calling her, that makes me not trustworthy because I'm not understanding how she rolls. She's super intelligent. She totally heard me the first time I asked her and she heard my reason because I was signaling to the crows. Uh, she could feel the agitation from the crows who've pretty much stopped now. Oh, some of them are still there. So if I were to keep calling her because she's not coming right away, that shows that I don't trust her. So I'm hearing dogs. Booby. Come here, love. Come here, Bubba. Let's leash you again because there's some dogs coming. Yeah, and they're barking. That's right. There we go. Good job. Come on. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. Hi there. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. You can get up. Come on, T-Bird. She's fine. She's totally fine. Come on, Tia. She doesn't want you. Come on. Come on, darling. Good girl. Good girl. Whoopsie. You hurt your paw in there, didn't you? Oh, Kumbi, should I take off the leash? He's, I'm like, why are you waiting? Okay, go ahead. So you see that? I was like, why aren't you getting up in the truck? And he keeps looking back at me and then pausing. And because he remembered that I have to take the leash off. See, now those dogs are heading down that way and the crows have kicked up again. So, so interesting. Good walk, guys. Yeah? Do you have a good time? Yeah? Okay, we're back home again. Good time, you guys. <laughs> I just love you guys so much. Yes, I do. Yes. Oh, goodness. Those are some very muddy, dirty paws. Is it time for a bone? Yeah? Time for a bone? <laughs> He's like, I'll take it. So when I do this, they understand. Yeah, can come straight out. Good job. Should we go get a bone? Yeah? It's time for a bone for Kumbi? Yeah? So here again, Kumba's taken his bone and gone straight out the dog door because he likes that and he likes to eat, you know, outside. But Miss Tia, yeah, she likes her bones inside the house. <laughs> so I can argue with her and I can lock her out or I can just give her what she needs. So I put them on here and she likes to have them in her dog bed. So I just move the plate over to her dog bed. Now she won't touch that until it's thawed because she doesn't like her bones frozen. But there she's got it in her own station. 
She's not worried because Kumba's outside, but when Kumba comes back in, she'll go park herself in her bed and make sure he knows that those are her bones and he's not to touch them. Isn't that right, Tia Bird? Yeah, they're not thawed yet. Good girl. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. You're such a good girl. Here, let me take your collar off. As soon as they come in, I take their collars off so their throat is not restricted. I wouldn't want to lie down or be eating head down with a band around my neck, so I take those off. Good girl.